How's it going, everyone? Welcome to a little discussion video. So, uh, the other day, apparently it says this was uploaded on the 22nd of July, but recently, uh, I mean, it at least came to my attention that there's been some footage of um, Pokemon following you in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. We have some interesting examples, such as Golem, Electrode, uh, Caterpie, Venusaur, and Onix. And uh, I figured we'd just check out today and discuss it. This video is mainly inspired by Venusaur, though, uh, which is the first one we're gonna go ahead and talk about because Venusaur, okay. I'm, 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 if you've not seen this already, then strap in. I'm assuming most of you have, though. Venusaur, Bulbasaur, and Ivysaur, they're quite, they're clearly inspired by frogs. Um, the official, the, the official original artist uh, of the, the, the trio said that they, you know, those Pokemon were, in v the Bulbasaur line was inspired by a frog. Um, but how many of you have actually seen a Venusaur walk? You know, most of the time in, the, you know, the anime, like you've seen Venusaur walk in HeartGold SoulSilver. You kind of just... You know, he's a sprite. He's a small, tiny sprite. So, nobody would really expect... Like, like I know he's a frog, right? Like, I totally get it. And I'm not complaining about this. I think this is really cool. Um, but there was an uproar, almost, about this animation. I'm just gonna... We're just gonna... Alright, look at Venusaur. <laughs> look at his hind legs. Like, I understand he's a frog, right? But I, I knew he was a frog the entire time. This isn't a surprise to me. Well, he's... Okay, for, okay I'm gonna talk about this first. Okay, he's not a frog. He's Venusaur, okay? Um, I want to get that out of the way. That's something, you know, I guess his base design is a frog, but at the end of the day, Pokemon are pocket monsters. They're all monsters. They're like, you, you can, you can call Growlithe a dog. That's what he's inspired by. But at the end of the day, he's a Growlithe. Like he's a dog tiger thingamajigger mixed into one. And you, you know, you can, you can call out their inspirations all you want, but that doesn't, you know, <laughs> I'm just, people get so into this subject people are so into like oh yeah venusaur is actually this a venusaur is actually that and it was on twitter and people were arguing over it and it's just like at the end of the day venusaur is venusaur and i i'm i don't really i'm personally i don't really care about like I, I like i like finding out origins of pokemon i like finding out you know what they're based on that's cool um but like whatever he's based off of a frog that's all you need to know um initially Obviously, there's a lot more going on. You know, Venusaur, he's obviously a dinosaur. Frog, you know, he, he has teeth. Like, there's a whole lot going on. Just, he's a lot of inspirations put into one design. And he's Venusaur. That's what he's become. I'm rambling. It's just it's so frustrating. People get, actually, he's not a frog. He's actually based off of this thing from the mythical... I don't... He's Venusaur, right? So, with him being based off of a frog, his walking animation... It's something else. I really like it. Um, it's just, like, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you like this? I personally love it. And I just, what was your initial reaction to it? I wasn't like, ew, what the hell is that? I was more just like, who expected this? Like, I mean, obviously, how else is he meant to keep up with you? Because, you know, usually the way we see him, he's like stationary. Or he's like slowly plodding along, you know, in like the anime. Um, but... It's always been like this. Um, actually, I'll show you guys. In Pokemon Battle Revolution, he walked exactly, you know, exactly like that, you know, because his sprite wasn't as, you know, it's not fleshed, it's not as fleshed out as it is now, or it's not, as, it's not as high quality, but, like, he's always sort of done the whole frog hop thing. So, like, I mean, this obviously, this isn't a main series game, so not everybody knows about this, but it, the, the walking animation is very, it's the same, right? He's doing a frog hop, and it, to me, I was just concerned that it, they were just making this up. Uh, but it's it's been there since Pokemon Battle Revolution, and it's maybe been there before. Like, you know, the, the, it's, probably, it's just, we've never really seen Venusaur follow behind us before like this. So I think for a lot of people, they were surprised. First, apparently, a lot of people didn't know he was a frog yeah, or a toad. He's covered in warts. He's a toad, frog, you know, same difference, right? <laughs> I'm going to piss a lot of people off by saying that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just want to I just want to hear your thoughts on it. Do you, do you think that's... Like, what do you, what do you think about, do you think it looks good? Do you, do you wish it was a bit, like, because uh, the, in the Caterpie animation, Caterpie kind of just trails behind, because, like, you, you're going too fast for it, and, you know, it's really, you know, it's realistic, but, like, you know, just, just, just imagine this Venusaur just chasing you down to eat you, man. I mean, realistically, Venusaur would actually be much bigger than that, and that's, that, I think that's one of the reasons why 
people were so like surprised to see him running behind you like that because he's a massive Pokemon, right? He's I think he's six foot, seven foot tall. I think he's six foot. He's like six foot something, right? He's a massive fucking dinosaur toad thingamajigger, right? With hops like that, you would expect just doosh, 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 the ground constantly shaking. And that's, I think that is the official, like, final reason as to why I didn't expect this. Because, like, I don't see no ground shakes. I, the ground should most certainly be shaken. Right there, you know? Uh, it makes me curious to see um, Ivysaur run behind us. I think we've actually already got gameplay of Bulbasaur running behind us. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's right here. Uh, it, like, it's, it's very brief. And look at, okay, just first of all, look at Charmander. Look at him take massive strides. Okay. Yeah, Bulbasaur doesn't do, like, the whole frog hop thing, because his legs are, like, you know, he, he runs like a dog. I'm curious to see how Ivysaur looks. I'm sure he's going to be very similar to Bulbasaur. I can't imagine Venusaur ever running like that, though. And, you know, obviously, they want Pokemon to follow you. There's, there's got to be a, there's got to be some way that Venusaur follows you, and I think this is the best way, obviously, because, you know, they're doing it. They know what they're doing. <laughs> it just, it just, it's just funny to see his legs extend so far out, you know? He's just like, boom, 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 boom. It's, I, I love it, personally. Um, one of my favorite things about Pokemon games is just, like, the graphics and just how it looks. So, uh, this means a lot to me. You know, I, I can tell a lot of, like, detail and attention and everything just going into this game. There's so much going on. It looks amazing. I'm so excited. Uh, so, I'm going to continue talking about animations. And, um... <laughs> this is Electrode. Um, this is Electrode following you behind. Actually, hold on. One more thing with the Venusaur. This explains why he's got eight baity fuck. This explains why he's got base 80 speed, right? Venusaur has quite decent speed for him being a massive dinosaur toad, and it always confused me why. And he had chlorophyll too, making him even faster in the sun. And I'm just like, how does he go so fast? And uh, I guess this is our answer. Just imagine this thing just just running up on you. That it's just it's beautiful. Um, all we need to know now now know why is. Why, why does Blastoise have 78 base speed? He's he's a turtle. They're meant to be slow. Why why is why is Blastoise two points slower than Venusaur? People suggested maybe because Blastoise kind of like spins in his shell in the air and you know he can go that fast that way. I don't know. Um, Venusaur looks dope though. I'm I'm really excited to you know play with him and in, in, in these games. Uh, but yeah, back to Electrode. Just a casual stroll with my uh, self-destructing ball of doom. Uh, you know, I, I, it's really cool that, like, because obviously in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, the Pokemon, like, this following you behind, they wouldn't roll. Because, like, that's, it's kind of hard to do that in, like, pixels. So, like, you know, you just kind of hop along behind you. It's, ah, oh, the Pokemon's come such a long way, guys. Um, I love these. These games look so good. I really hope that they continue this as a series for the entire games. You know, like, do a Let's Go game for Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh. I'd love to see all these games in this style. Like, having, like, oh, it's it's just beautiful. Uh, then, I don't know if this is Onyx following you or if this is a ride Pokemon. I think it's a, when I mean, you're, he's riding the Onyx, right? But I don't know if it's possible for Onyx to follow behind you. I think you have to ride on him. Like, I think there are certain Pokemon you might have to ride on. Like, I could be wrong, though. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. Um, Onyx is another massive Pokemon in the anime. He's shown to, like, make, like, massive tremors whenever he just moves. He breathes incorrectly and just the earth just shatters because he's so big. Um, and yeah, he's... <laughs> you know, there he is. He's not... Have, he's nothing. Nothing's happening. He's just kind of... Obviously, they're not going to make it that realistic. I'm just being silly for the sake of being silly. But this is the Carpy video I mentioned. Um, Carpy is so slow that he kind of just falls behind. And you kind of have to just wait for him to catch up. And uh, look at these Spearows, man. I love this. So apparently you just, I'm pretty sure you can't just encounter Pokemon in the grass. Apparently they just, you can walk into them and that's how you get, like that's so, so cool. And I'm jealous of everyone that's gotten to try it. But I also, I'm kind of glad I'm not trying it early because I want my first hands-on experience to be completely brand new. Because I think that's some, one of the things that kind of, you know, like there was Sun and Moon demos and there was Oras demos. Like, I think that I kind of ruined it a little bit for me. And it's just a demo, but it, it did ruin it a tiny well, a tad, you know, my first experience with it. Um, honestly, showing off. I mean, there's not really much to show off with Kanto. We already know everything about Kanto. We need to know. Um, so I'm just, I'm hoping they just 
they don't really show off much more gameplay. I just want the games to come out already, which it's actually getting really close for the games coming out. Like, that is insane. The games are actually coming out in, like, three months. Oh, my God. But, yeah. Um, poor little Caterpie's trailing behind. Um, if you can't... I don't think you can randomly encounter Pokemon in the grass. I'm pretty sure. So, like... Where... What's... Is Repel going to be an item in this game? Like, that's another question I have about these games. Are... Are the general items that we usually have going to be in these games, like... Are repels going to be needed? Or... Because you can just avoid the Pokemon now. Um... Uh, another thing that I was talking about with my friend Luke today was, um, you know, how if they were to do, like, VGC in this form, I really don't think they'll do VGC with Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go UV. I'm pretty sure it's confirmed that they're not, um, because it's only Gen 1 Pokemon. But if they were to, would they have Eviolite Magneton? Probably not, because Magneton isn't in this game, so would Eviolite even work on it? Like, you know, questions like that. I'm just curious. I can't, I'm just, I can't wait for all my questions to be answered, honestly. Um, so yeah. Poor little Caterpie trailing behind. I don't know how far you can go without, like, if I, if you go out of reach, does it, yeah, that's what I thought. That, I, that was literally what I was asking. I've not actually watched the full video. I was like, does it, if he goes out of reach of your camera, does he kind of just go back into the Pokeball? And yeah, as we saw there, he kind of just quickly, it looks like a, wait, that looks like an ultra wormhole. Uh, he kind of just quickly, you know, flashes in. Yeah, the Pokeball kind of just flies over. Oh my god, that's such a fast animation. He just, yeah, he just flies over and comes back out. So yeah, that's that's cool. You can trail your character behind you and abuse him. <laughs> Which is um, always great to know. Last one to look at here. We have, um... Have, um... Golem. I really... Ah, oh, I just... I want to see how all the Pokemon look walking behind you. Like, that Golem looks awesome. I want to see how Graveler look. Does Graveler roll, or does Graveler kind of just shuffle behind you really slowly? Like, I just want to know. How does Diglett look, like, out in the grass? Does, does, I mean, eh, I guess. Because in the anime, Diglett, like, leaves a trail behind him. He's like, Diglett, dig, Diglett, dig. It's a massive trail in the ground. I doubt it'll do that in this game. But, like, you know. Things like that. I'm just curious about how all this is going to look. Because the Diglett just popped up right there. But yeah, Golem looks awesome. And oh, that, that's such bliss to watch. That man just walked through Diglett Cave without encountering a single Pokemon. In Fire Red Leaf Green, when you walk through Diglett Cave, you are lucky if you don't encounter like five. Um, of course, unless you have a repel. So that, watching that was just blissful. And it's a random dog trio there. Um, one thing I have heard um, from Birdkeeper Toby's videos is that he said he got to play these games and apparently Pokemon found in Viridian Forest are so different now. Apparently you can find wild bee drills and stuff, um, which is cool. But I like it worries me a little bit because there's only 151 Pokemon to catch in these games, I guess, if you include a little of forms a bit more. Um, so if I can just catch a wild bee drill and just not have to bother training it up, mm, you know, it's a little scary. Um, but... I don't know. At the end of the day, uh, it's very Pokemon Go like, and I, you know, I've completed my Pokemon Go Gen One decks, but I still play and I still catch Gen One Pokemon with the hopes of getting a better one. So you know, it might be like that. It might be an effect like that where you're just constantly catching Pokemon, trying to get good ones. Um, apparently, I think one more thing I want to talk about is shiny hunting in this game. Um, obviously, uh, if you didn't know, I'm really into shiny hunting now. Um, I probably will shiny hunt in these games. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Uh, but I, I've not actually. I don't think I've read the article or heard anything about it or watched the video but i've heard i'm pretty yeah i think Cerebi tweeted about it um okay don't quote me on, just take this as a grain of salt right this could be completely false information um i'm just talking about it because it's what i've heard i think um shiny pokemon i don't i don't actually remember I've, I've heard two different things i've heard that in the overworld it doesn't show that they're shiny at all um or, and then i've also heard that it shows sparkles or something um in the overworld of it's shiny so I don't know what to think, because I feel like it would make more sense if it just didn't have any sparkles on it, and then if you encounter it and it happens to be shiny, then it's shiny. Um, and then maybe, you know, adopt Pokemon Go rates, where it's like 1 in 400 for a shiny. I don't know what to think, honestly. If there is sparkles in the overworld, then I guess it just means you don't miss out on it. Uh, the sparkles could be maybe very faint, though, so it's maybe hard to see. I'm not sure. Um, I don't actually remember. If you guys actually can shed any light on that, then that'd be appreciated. I might look it up right now really quick. Um, Alright, here it is. Um, although it was confirmed at E3 that shiny Pokemon were to be in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, we now have further confirmation that shiny Pokemon um, 
We have more. F we have further confirmation of shiny Pokemon in these games through various Italian, French press reports, as well as Dot Esports in the UK. In the overworld, they will not appear in the shiny colors, but they will have a special shiny aura around them, showcasing two stars. This is similar to the blue red auras that are seen to detonate size. This is similar to the blue and red auras seen to denote size. So yes, shiny Pokemon are confirmed for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee if that's something you're excited for. Anyways, this was a fun little discussion video I thought I'd put together because as you know, I'm really excited for these games. I know some of you guys are. I know not all of you are because it's I like, okay, this is the thing. A lot of you guys don't see these as main series games. They are, but they're not main series games for everyone like they're not main series games in the terms of like if you don't play them you're missing out on something i mean i personally you know you're missing out on an experience but i don't think you're missing out on any new you're not missing out on any new story it's not like this is gen 8 you know it's it's just gen 1 remade to be higher quality or, or whatever you know you're not really missing out on much by not playing these games but they they have the control their main series like they're counted as canon in the main series I'm 99% I'm, I'm sure about that. So, you know, a lot of you guys are like, oh, I don't really care about them. They're not main series. And I think that's why a lot of the hype for it is not, it's not as hype as it could be. Um, at least with my channel, because obviously I'm a main series YouTuber. But hopefully, if any of you guys have Nintendo Switches, hopefully you guys give these games a chance. It could be fun. Maybe play these games. It's, a, it's like a local multiplayer game. Maybe play the game with your family. You know, like... Maybe try and explain Pokemon to them if they don't quite understand it. It could be like quite a nice, easy way for them to get into it. I just, I think these games are going to do a world of good. And I'm honestly so excited for them. And I hope you guys are too. If you are, of course, drop me a like on the video if you enjoyed the little discussion here. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is just talk. Um, and I don't know. I One of my favorite things to do, obviously, because I'm a YouTuber, is talk. So... I'll, let's talk in the comments. Let me know what you guys think and I might make a follow-up video if there's like enough to talk about Anyways, that's it for me. I'm out of here. Bye. Bye